G'day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. In today's video, we're going to talk about diluted particle count. So in a previous video, we discussed two different methods, ISO 4407, which is a manual particle count through a microscope. We talked about ISO 11500, which is an automated particle count using a light or a, a laser. And in today's video, we're going to talk about the third method, ASTM D7647-10. And that's also an automated count using light extinction, but using dilution techniques to try and um, solve the problem of air and water entrainment. So just to recap, and I'll put a link in the description, ISO 11500 uses the light extinction method. So a particle crosses uh, a laser beam and is picked up on the detector. The problem with this is that it can also pick up things like, such as water, air, sludge, and additives. Now the question is, why do we want to eliminate these four different types of particles from the count? And to do that, we need to back up and think about why it is that we care about oil cleanliness. So if you imagine a contaminant, right, it's got to pass through this oil film, which is in the region of 0.1 to 5 microns thick. So the contaminant is of that order of magnitude. And as it passes through, it's going to contact some of the surface asperities. That's going to cause two or three body erosion, which eventually is going to lead to micro pitting, which would result in spalling and macro pitting, and eventually failure. So that's why we care about cleanliness. These particles can eventually lead to damage and eventually failure of our equipment. But what about soft particles? Well, if you imagine some sludge that's going through your system, when it reaches uh, a point um, where it's occluded, the flow is occluded, it can actually just morph its shape and continue to pass through. So soft particles, such as sludge, air, water, or even particles which are designed to be in the lubricant, like uh, silicon-based additives, these aren't a concern from an equipment damage perspective. So that's why we want to remove them from the count. So how do we do that? Well, we need an adjustment to the ISO standard. So what we have for automated particle counting is ISO 11500, automated particle count by light extinction. We modify that in ASTM version of this, D7647-10, to be automated particle counting of lubricating and hydraulic fluids using dilution techniques to eliminate the contribution of water and interfering soft particles by light extinction. Now that is not a catchy name, that's a mouthful, um, but let's explain how they do that. So first one, step one, get your sample and do an inspection. I've covered why you would do an inspection in a previous video. Uh, effectively, it's to look for contaminants, uh, water, etc. Second thing that you want to do is agitate the sample. This is to make it homogeneous. We then want to obtain the volume required for the cleanliness code test. Remember, on this oil sample, we're probably running a whole bunch of tests, um, ICP and FDIR, etc. So just the volume that we need for the cleanliness test. And now we have that sample volume, we're going to dilute it with an appropriate diluent. This is a bit of a tricky one. So there are many different ways that we could dilute the sample with many different diluents. And in many respects, it's a judgment call by the lab as to which diluent that they use um, and how strong and how polar they want it to be. You could use lamp oil, for example, or toluene. It really depends on um, the nature of the sample and the nature of the contaminants. So this bit is maybe a little bit more uh, of an artistic choice as opposed to a scientific choice. Uh, but there are standards within the ASTM method uh, which govern uh, how, to, how to choose the appropriate diluent. Uh, once we've done that, 
We're going to agitate the sample again to make it homogeneous again. And then we're going to degas the sample to try and remove those uh, air bubbles. Remember, that's uh, another one of those uh, factors that could disrupt uh, the cleanliness code and we're trying to back out the air bubbles. And finally, this sample is ready to begin testing. So the ASTM method here is really about sample preparation as, it, as opposed to a change in the test method. We're still going to measure ISO cleanliness by light extinction, so by shining a laser through the sample, um, but we're trying to prepare the sample in such a way that things like additives, water, and air, and sludge are removed from the sample beforehand. All right, so what can I expect in terms of accuracy, repeatability, reproducibility, that kind of thing? What's interesting about the ISO cleanliness uh, specs, so um, 11500, for example, is it doesn't really give us uh, much of an idea on accuracy or precision. There aren't really any precision statements uh, in, the t in the test criteria. ASTM does give us some precision statements, but they refer just to diluents of lamp oil and dipropylene glycol and propyl ether. Lots of uh, big names in, in this presentation. Uh, for those two different diluents, um, they have done some testing to determine the precision of the test method. And for repeatability, you can expect anywhere between 30 to 73% repeatability. And on the reproducibility front, it's anywhere in the region of 76 to 135%. So we need to take some of these results. And this is, I should say, on the, the particle count uh, part, not the ISO cleanliness code. So on particle count, we can expect variation of up to 135% on the 14 micron count um, when we send an identical sample off to two different labs. So there is, if you like, some lack of precision that is built into the test method. And so we need to take our results with a bit of a grain of salt. On the ISO code front, repeatability and reproducibility vary between less than one ISO code up to two ISO codes. So again, if you were to take two identical samples and send them off to different labs, it is acceptable within this ASTM test method that they can vary by up to two ISO codes. Um, I'll have a future video discussing the impact of oil cleanliness on reliability and uh, equipment longevity. And you'll see that two ISO codes is actually a really big difference. So again, uh, we need to take these results with a bit of a grain of salt, and it's really important to trend your results over time. I hope that this has been helpful in illustrating some of the differences between diluted particle count and standard particle count. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. This has been Lubrication Explained.